So on Sunday, the museum opened for the first time to a limited ticketed kind of thing going on. Uh, we'll see how the next uh, few weeks progress regarding the, all of this stuff at the minute. Like, it's looking quite good potentially, but it's too early to say with all of that stuff. So we'll see how it goes. But currently we're taking it week by week, tickets and stuff. The, we, the link for the next week, which is this Sunday, August the 1st, which is the next open day, is now public. So if you want to book a time slot, they're, our time slots, however, they're done in a way that it's only half the capacity is sold then. So there's like quite a lot of crossovers. So, I mean, even in the first day, didn't have to tell anybody that we're full because everybody, it just worked out that everybody was uh, staying for long enough and just, you know, people were staying in between Oh, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes up to, I think some people stayed for like three or four hours in the end, but they were able to because of the way it was set up. So yeah, all good. Uh, this video is just a short that I put up on the Look Mum No Computer channel last week, just to show sort of the layout of the situation. <laughs> So yeah, it's taken a long time to get to this point. This is, uh, well, it's been about nine or 10 months that I've really kind of like really gone and done this uh, whilst trying to hold down, you know, doing documenting everything and stuff quite well. And it's, I'm very pleased with how it's gone. It's been quite a lot of work, but it's worked out pretty well. It's currently like a bare bones kind of situation. It just, uh, right now it feels like it's at a point where it's interactive enough to be, you know, interesting and feel like a worthwhile journey to come along. And as time goes on, basically what I'm gonna do is basically spend every week doing a project to further the museum. So every week there'll be a video out. And then if you really wanna come and see that thing, well, you can come and see it the weekend or something. So for instance, this weekend, uh, there's gonna be the stereo Leslie speakers in the Game Boy Mega Machine that's hopefully gonna be done, which is gonna be a, quite fun, I think. There, there, there's a couple of boxes sitting in the bottom. I've just got to wire them up and stuff with speed controls, uh, which are gonna be under control voltage as well. So you can actually phase the stereo Leslie speaker setup. It'll be pretty cool. People have mentioned to put it onto the Mega Drone. I don't see the point in that because Leslie speakers are there to make it sound bigger and stuff. This is just literally dry loads of oscillators. There's no point modulating that thing because I think it will reduce from it. That's why I think good for the good for the Mega Drone uh, for for the well they all sound the same Mega Machine Game Boy Mega Machine uh, descriptions and stuff something that I do must be honest I've been a little bit slow at doing it however I've tried a few different things for instance here is a bit where I've actually got to uh, the actual uh, descriptions as you can see I've just just print outs just print outs so that it's nice and quick and easy I was going to do it a little bit more fancy but I just I just haven't got the time really to get it all done. And this is still, I'm trying to do a display set every morning. So hopefully by a couple of weeks, it'll all have uh, descriptions. But right now there's only, only a patchy set of descriptions. But if anybody has any questions, well, they just ask me or Johnny or whoever's, whoever's about. So this concept worked out quite well uh, around the area. If people want to read more about things, for instance, here's a printout of Electronics Today, Electronics International, uh, July 1978, which is just a basically, oh, there's one empty page, basically a lowdown of the project for the Transcendent 2000, for instance. Here is the psych tone, which was actually acting a little bit odd this weekend. I need to open that up within the next couple of days. I think I need a bigger heat sink on the back. And um, yeah, print, uh, same, same deal, print out of the, um, what's going on, as well as the rather quick and easy descriptions here and there. This is something that potentially will get broken at some points, but it's not, it's been a day and they haven't been torn up yet. So we'll see how it goes. Actually really surprised about how much this stuff gets used. Uh, the, the, the cover's off right now. I was doing some work on it, but 
Like, yeah, people all, all ages were playing this, listening to Tecmo and calling the numbers over there and soon there'll be more and more phones going and stuff because right now, uh, just after, funnily enough, after everybody went on Sunday, I spent a little while actually wiring up all of the ringing uh, signals into this uh, part of the telephone exchange. So soon there'll be more and more stuff and audio to listen to and this, that and the other. The Mega Drone, uh, finally, <laughs> the amp that I had the Mega Drone going through, which sounded pretty beefy, uh, was it, it broke a few weeks, a few days before. So right now it's only going through one PA speaker. But it, when people come here, the, it kind of gets the idea that you know you don't want it too loud and all-encompassing because it just takes up the whole over the whole place. So it's good to have get an idea of it through the speaker. But soon there'll be more set more things going on. But you know just. It's a work in progress, work in progress. But like, uh, there's a theremin as well. Now you can turn it on, have a go on theremins and stuff, and it's wired into a speaker down here as well. That got quite a lot of use. Uh, and funnily enough, uh, yeah, people walked away and remembered to turn it off, which is great. So you know, I'd, maybe I need to give uh, the uh, museum going people a bit more, a bit more credit, a bit more credit. You know, how cool is that? Also, I remember there's this story I got uh, from. Uh, Nervous Squirrel, he mentioned a, a time when he was working and um, he went somewhere in an accident. The first person that came over to a theremin once just uh, thought it was a lever and just yanked it off. Uh, luckily nobody's done that yet, but we'll see. <laughs> the only thing that died was this Commodore 64. Oh, there's a bit of mess, it's going to sort it out. But the only thing that died was the Commodore 64, uh, which was playing synth card, so he played it like a synthesizer. However, I think it didn't really handle being on that well. I think it's because partially because the power supply is the old one and stuff. Uh, I've got to fix that for next weekend. That'll be a project. etch sketch went really well, people like that. Up here, uh, I've just put it there, but right now this is a, this is a, a like a factory or school bell sequencer. Uh, you plug it into a master clock initially, but this is going to be one of the next things that I wire up. After the Leslie speaker, I'll be plugging this one in because I've got a control panel down here. Basically, this is just going to be a really long trigger sequencer. It's going to be pretty, pretty snazzy. Synth zone was interesting. The thing is, is the modular synth, you're never going to please everybody. The thing is, is if you don't know what's going on and you're fiddling around, then always, nearly all the time, it ends up in silence, which is fine, it just happens, but then hopefully other people come along that know what they're doing, are able to plug things in. Uh, it was suggested to make a slightly simpler modular synth, but I mean, they're already still around, like the fart boxes. They're like already pre-patched and stuff, but I probably, it was suggested also to make a quick start guide for this, which will happen at some point. But yeah, it's great because some people who ain't too sure about it come along, do mess around, have a fun, but then plug a few things in and not realize why it's gone quiet. It happens, it's fine. And hopefully just after that, somebody comes along, solves the problem. It worked in the weekend. I only had to pop over once to kind of rejig it a little bit, but hmm, it's pretty good. Also, another thing is I got really worried about things falling on kids. So absolutely everything, absolutely everything is like really bolted down. Like you cannot move, like nothing moves. It's just completely not gonna go it uh, doesn't go anywhere, which is really good. So like none of it can get pulled off and land on, land on somebody's foot, which is always quite useful. But that means I'm not really looking forward to having to uh, remove these at some point because like for instance, this one has got like uh, two M12 bolts with some uh, metal uh, panels inside it. So you have to take everything off the front to take it off the off the desk, and then this is the same. It's like uh, being mounted inside, so you have to pull the top off and then take the bolts off. Similar with this, same thing with this, and then this one. Yeah, same thing through the foot through the foot uh, foot mount holes. There's like um yeah like M8 bolts or something. Just yeah, it's just uh, yeah. So I'm not. It's not going to be fun having to remove all this stuff at some point. <laughs> Annoyingly, I didn't get any footage, partially because I was a little bit rushed off my feet beforehand getting it ready. Like I was up all night the night before, pat testing the whole shebang. So that was a long one. And then yeah, I didn't have time to sort out like sort of like a disclaimer rate waiver for filming and stuff. So I didn't actually get any filming done. But at the same time, I didn't really feel that bad about it because. If you go to a museum, for instance, you don't. You, the last thing you want is somebody plonking a camera in your face. If I went to a museum and somebody was plonking a camera in my face, I'd just, I'd probably run away and hide behind, I don't know, hide behind the tanks or something, wherever this museum is. And, and uh, yeah, so like, it's one thing filming in a gig setup because I reckon in gigs, uh, you know, it's sort of a bit more accepted that there's going to be cameras around. 
in a museum, it's a little bit different. So it's a little bit of a weird one. So hopefully I'll find some photos or something that people took of the first day and next time, because hopefully I'll have a little bit more time to prepare. I don't have to blooming do loads of last minute setups because it's, it's all a much more set up than it was last like, on Sunday morning. So uh, yeah, anyway, that's, if you're interested in coming this weekend, the ticket links are below. If you wanna come following weekends, we're taking it weekend by weekend right now because I just, uh, there's just no way of telling what, what the next few weeks are like. It's hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood looking good, but you just, we don't know. So what happens is every Monday, I share a link on Eventbrite, if uh, on Eventbrite uh, via to Patreon and YouTube membership, and then the following day um, I put it public. The reason why it's there, so people, so the patrons and whoever who actually help fund this kind of thing, um, they get first dibs on the window slots, which, like I said before, uh, you know they they they're made to cross over a little bit. But anyway, there's a little bit of interesting things, and the links are below if you're interested. And uh, yeah, have a lovely time. Mm.